I often describe lasers as a versatile technological wonder. A wonder not only because we as humans have able to engineer energy into a light form that has really useful properties, i.e. a laser, but we could also do really wonderful things with that laser light. The applications of lasers are really quite diverse. We can use laser pulses to freeze frame extremely fast processes that happen in chemistry and physics and the life sciences. So lasers that we have here at the Central Laser Facility have been used to study areas of medicine and cellular biology because we can look at the very small on the very fast time scale. And then moving on to some of the ultra high power laser systems that we have here, we can use that laser light to actually transform matter into a completely different state. We use the extreme light intensity contained in a single pulse of our high powered lasers to superheat matter to the fourth state. That's what we call a plasma. Firstly, your laser will superheat that material to a few millions of degrees Celsius. So that's pretty hot. But it does that in less than a trillionth of a second. That's a lot quicker than any of the particles inside your plasma have time to expand and decrease in density to say that of a gas. Which means that your laser-driven plasmas are really, really, really hot and can also have a solid light density. There's possibly one other place in our solar system that has those conditions and that's at the centre of our sun. Being able to mimic the conditions found at the centre of the sun is not only useful in the context of understanding where the universe came from or what's going on outside of the Earth, but there's also an application that is really relevant to us down here on Earth and that's looking at future energy sources. So at the centre of the Sun, there's a process known as fusion. That's binding two light isotopes of hydrogen together and in the process releasing a vast amount of energy in a relatively clean form. If we can copy that process right here on Earth, then we potentially have an energy source that is clean and will last for millions of years. Lasers are pretty good at recreating the conditions found at the centre of the Sun. You can get high temperature and high density at the same time. So the big question for one of the researchers in this field is can we use lasers to drive fusion reactions right here on Earth so that we can use that to keep our power stations working for millions of years to come. Lasers are a form of light. This is a special form of light which makes it a useful tool for science and research. Lasers tend to move forward in time and space like a pencil beam rather than emerging in a wide angle like a torch does for example. But lasers also have other properties like being of a single wavelength which we see as a single colour. And they also have another property which means that they can reach very high intensities. That property being that the light source is coherent or in phase. Here at the Central Laser Facility, we have a whole collection of laser beams. One property of these laser beams which makes them useful for the science that we do is that they are pulsed sources of laser light. So when we press fire on our laser beams, instead of a whole continuous train of laser light coming out, just one single packet of light comes out of the laser beam. The fact that we can press our lasers into a single pulse means that we can do a lot more than shine them onto samples. We can start to capture very fast processes. Another reason why compressing laser beams into a single pulse is really useful is that we can start to reach incredibly high light intensities or incredibly high powers. Power is a measure of how fast energy is delivered in time. So that's energy divided by time. The shorter the time scale, the higher the power. The range of what we can do with lasers is vast. We can use them to study the fundamentals of the universe, where we came from, where galaxies were formed. But we can also use them to shine a light on the fundamentals of biology and chemistry. We can look at what's happening inside of our cells. But what I really love about what we do with the lasers here at the Central Laser Facility is that we look at all aspects of extreme science. We look at science on the extreme time scale. We can capture physics that's occurring in less than a trillionth of a second. We can drive material to millions of degrees Celsius. But overriding that is that the applications of that science is important to us as a society and indeed our future. That's extremely inspiring.